Welcome to a simple model for mutates, a part of the Google Ads API Migration Workshops 2021. My name is Tanit Pranilarat. I am a developer relations engineer based in Tokyo. Before we start, please be reminded that we have a Q&A forum located below this video. So feel free to submit your questions and afford any interesting questions you find. Our team is standing by to answer them. This is the agenda for this presentation. I will start with the introduction to mutate, followed by the types of mutate methods, including single resource mutate method, multi resource mutate method, and batch processing. Then I will discuss features of the mutate, that is, um, field mask, response content type, temporary IDs, and mutate validation. Finally, I will cover sample use cases with code examples and end this presentation with caveats and special cases of the mutate. Let's get started. The Google Ads API is centered around two main concepts, resources and services. A resource represents a Google Ads entity such as campaign, ad group, ad group ad that you might be already familiar with, and it is identified by a resource name. Shown on the screen here is the diagram of customer with two campaigns. The customer has its own resource name, which is customer slash triple X, and the two campaigns also have their own resource names which incorporate their parent entity, which is a customer in blue here. So that resource names will start with um, the resource name of the customer, which is customer slash triple X, followed by slash campaigns slash their IDs, which are triple Y and triple Z for campaign one and campaign two respectively. Services, on the other hand, modify by creating or updating or removing the Google Ads entities. For example, you can use campaign service to modify campaigns. Method names are mostly in the form of muted resources, such as muted campaigns, muted ad groups, and muted ad group ads. However, there are some exceptions, such as create customer client, which also modifies a Google Ads entities, but does not follow the form that I mentioned before. Let's take a quick look at the example of creating a new campaign using mutate campaigns method by using our client libraries. Um, in this case, I use the PHP client library. So first, we need to create a new campaign, setting some properties like name, status, campaign budget, advertising channel type, and a bidding strategy, which in this case, I use manual CPC. Then we need to create a campaign operation and set its create property, which is the campaign that we just created in the previous step. Finally, we get a campaign service client, which will connect us to the campaign service of the Google Ads API. And then we call the method here highlighted in blue, mutate campaigns, and supply the input, which is customer ID and a list of campaign operations. Once we call this mutate campaigns method and the connection ends, we will get back an output, which is a variable named response highlighted in green here. Let's take a closer look to the mutate input and output. So methods for mutating entities will have one input and one output. The input type is usually named method name followed by request. And the output type is method name followed by response. Let's use an example of mutate campaigns. So defined in protocol of language, you can see that um, mutate campaigns method has an input as mutate campaigns request and the output as mutate campaigns response. So you might notice that in the previous slide, I show you that the mutate campaigns method of the PHP client library accepts two parameters, which is customer ID and a list of operations, which is different from here when I say that um, the input is just one thing, mutate campaigns request. Actually, it is the same. Our client libraries generate the source based on the protobuf definition, but they might do some different post-processing, which in the case of the PHP library, it flattens out all the required properties, which is customer ID and a list of operations. So if we take a closer look into the mutate input or request, we can see that the common properties of a mutate request are customer ID, operations, partial failure, validate only, and response content type. The first two properties, customer ID and operations, are what most mutate methods have and they are required parameters and that that's why the PHP library flattens them out. 
For the rest, partial failure valid only and response content type. They are optional parameters or properties, and we will talk about this later. Please note that not all requests include the properties listed in this slide, so you need to check the documentation or the code before you assume that they will be available for your mutate methods. Showing this slide is the simplified diagram of a mutate request structure. I will explain from top to bottom. So here we have a mutate campaigns method, and we need to supply the input, which is the mutate campaigns request. The mutate campaigns request has two properties here, customer ID and the operations properties. The operations property in turn is a list of the campaign operation objects. The campaign operation object has two properties, operation and update mask. Note that I hide some properties from the mutate campaigns request here for the sake of simplicity. Let's take a closer look at the campaign operations. So in the mutate campaign request, we have the operations property, which is defined at a list of campaign operation objects. The campaign operation object has two properties, update mask and operation. The operation is a one-off field defined in the protobuf language, which means that you need to set one of the three properties here, either create or update or remove. For the create and update, you need to specify a campaign object. But for remove, you need to specify a resource name as string. For update, you need to specify an update mask as well, which will be used for selecting the fields to update. And I will cover this update mask a few masks later in this session. That's all for the mutate request. Let's take a look at the mutate response. The common properties of a mutate response are partial failure, error, and results. Partial failure error is used when the partial failure property is enabled in the request. And the results here is used for supplying the output by the server. And most methods will have this form of, of output. Again, not all responses have exactly all the above properties. So you need to check the documentation before you code. This diagram shows the mutate response structure, similar to what I showed you for the mutate request. We have a campaign service as a service client here, and we want to use mutate campaigns method. So when we use the mutate campaigns method and supply any input that we covered before, we will get back the output in forms of mutate campaigns response object, which will contain a results variable as its property. This results variable will contain a list of mutate campaign result objects, which in turn has two properties, resource names and campaign. However, note that the mutate campaign result will return the resource name by default. This is the most common output of mutate requests. But for a campaign, it will be returned only when the response content type in the request is set to mutable resource and don't worry, I will cover this later in this session. Now let's move on to the types of mutate methods. In the Google Ads API, we have three types of mutate methods, single resource, multi-resources, and batch processing. Single resource is similar to regular mutate methods in the AdWords API that you might be already familiar with. Multi-resource mutate method is more powerful than a single resource mutate method in that it accepts multiple types of resources in one request and this is new in the Google Ads API. Batch processing is also similar to that of the AdWords API, but they use different mechanisms, which I will cover later. Let's take a look at the first type, a single resource mutant method. In this type of mutant method, the method name will be like I showed to you before, mutant campaigns, mutant ad groups, for example. The sample use cases here are when you want to create a new sorry, a few several campaigns that share the same budget, or when you want to remove thousands of ad group criteria. The advantages of this type is that it's very similar to the AdWords API, so you probably need less time for migrating to the Google Ads API when you aim for using this type of mutated method. And secondly, every resource has a corresponding mutate service. For the disadvantages, this can easily lead to the orphaned resources. Imagine that you want to create a new campaign by creating a new 
campaign budget as well. If you can successfully create a new campaign budget but not a new campaign, you will be left with an often resource which is a campaign budget. Secondly, the error handling for this type of mutate method is fully manual, like the example that I just mentioned. If you want to get rid of an often resource, you need to do that by yourself. Finally, the maximum timeout of this mutate method type is at 60 seconds. So if you have a large number of operations that need very long time for processing, there is a chance that you hit this maximum timeout. And this is an example of mutate canvas again. As we already covered this multiple times, I will go over this very quickly. For this mutate campaigns, you just need to specify a mutate campaigns request as an input, and it will return mutate campaigns response as an output. The second type I would like to explain here is the multi-resource mutate method. When you use multi-resource mutate method, you just need to use one method named Google as service .mutate. A sample use case is when you create a new campaign and multiple ad groups belonging to that campaign in one request. The pros of this mutate method type is that first, you can use a single service for most mutations. Secondly, you can include different operation and resource types. Third, you can avoid often resources because the request will fail if one of its operations fail. Finally, you can use a temporary IDs, which is a concept of linking multiple resource types together in one request, and I will explain this later. The cons of this mutated method type is um, similar to the single resource mutated method type in that the error handling is fully manual and the maximum timeout is at 60 seconds. However, there is one more cons, which is not all resource types are supported in the multi-resource mutated method type. This is the um, definition in protocol of language of mutate method of the Google Ads service. Here, it is very similar to the single resource in that you just need to specify one input, which is mutate Google Ads request here, and it will return an output as mutate Google Ads response. This is the definition of mutate Google Ads request. As you can see, it's very similar to the mutate campaigns request in that it contains customer ID, partial failure, valid only, and response content type. The only difference here is that it contains the field name um, mutate operations, which is defined as a list of mutate operation objects. In turn, the mutate operation object has one field named operation, which is a one-off field. And as you might be able to guess, this one-off field lists all the operations of all the supported resources. Although the list is very long, it doesn't support all the resource types available in the Google Ads API, just as I mentioned before. Let's take a look at mutate Google Ads response. Here, the mutate Google Ads response is defined to have two fields, partial failure error and mutate operation responses. Mutate operation responses is defined to be a list of mutate operation response objects. In turn, the mutate operation response object contains one field, which is response. And it is also a one-off field, similar to how the operation is one-off field of the mutate operation object I showed in the previous slide. To understand the operation and result relationship better, let's take a look at this diagram. In the middle, we have Google Ads Service .mutate as the method we want to call. We need to provide an input as mutate Google Ads request, and we will get back the output as mutate Google Ads response. In the mutate Google Ads request, we need to supply mutate operations field with the list of mutate operation objects. So let's say that in the first element of um, the list, we provide add group add operation as the one off field of the mutate operation object. When you get back the output, the first element of the list of mutate operation response objects will contain the mutate add group add result as well because it corresponds to each other. On the other hand, for the second element, let's say that you supply campaign operation as the one-off field of mutate operation object. The second element of the mutate operation response objects will be the mutate campaign result as well. Let's take a look at the third type of mutate method, batch processing. 
In batch processing, you use multiple methods of the batch job service. The sample use cases of batch processing would be you want to pass so many numbers of ad group ads, for example, 500 and 1000 ad group ads, or you want to create many unrelated sets of dependent objects, such as many shopping listing groups. The pros of batch processing is first, it is resilient because it handles um, server errors for you. And you can also include different operation and resource types similar to what you can do with the multi-resource mutate type. This is a single service for most mutations and you can use temporary IDs similar to the multi-resource mutate type too. Finally, it does not require a good network connectivity because it is a, a synchronous connection. The cons of the batch processing is first, similar to multi-resource uh, mutate type, it does not support all resource types yet. And you cannot be sure when it will be finished. You need to pull the result by yourself. Finally, the, the sequence flow is much more complicated than the single resource and multi-resource mutate types and requires uh, many steps. This is a diagram of batch processing for both the AdWords API and the Google Ads API. For the AdWords API, you need to create a batch job and then you get the upload URL, you bulk upload operations to that upload URL. And then you wait for some time, you pull the status, check whether it is done or cancelled. If so, you can download the results and the errors. For the Google Ads API, when you create a new batch job, you bulk add operations to that batch job, which you will get a sequence token that you can use to add the operations for the next time. Each bulk add operations required will contain the full operations, which is unlike the upload URL that you use in the AdWords API. In the AdWords API, sometimes you will need to upload the operations, which will result in the chunks of operations in XML. That does not happen in the Google Ads API. Now you can wait between the bulk add operation step and starting batch job step. So when you are done adding the operations to the batch job, you just need to tell batch job service to run the batch job. And after that, you can pull the status to see whether it's done. Here you have um, a Boolean variable named done that you can check whether it is true or false. If it is true, meaning that the job is done, you can download the resource and errors, which are now in the same object. So you don't need to use the download URL like you do in um, the AdWords API. Let's have a quick recap. We have three mutate method types in the Google Ads API, single resource, multi-resource, and batch processing. Single resource is similar to that of the AdWords API. So it is easiest to migrate in case you want to still use this type of mutate method. Multi-resource mutate method is new in the Google Ads API. It allows you to mix many resource types in one request. As for the batch processing, it is similar to that of the AdWords API in that it allows you to mix many resource types in one request and also allow up to 1 million operations. It has a synchronous connection, so there is no timeout for the batch processing and that's why it is suitable for large jobs that can be done or run concurrently. And for the batch processing, the error is semi-automatically handled by the Google Ads API server for the transient errors on the server side. So you don't need to worry about that. However, all the mutate method types listed here still are subject to the API limitations. The next topic in this presentation is features of the mutate. In the Google Ads API, we provide many features that can help you do the mutates more efficiently than the AdWords API. The first one is field mask. Feedback is used for identifying fields that you want to update for a given object. So those that are not in the field mask will be ignored even if you send them to the server. We recommend using the field mask utility, which is available in our client libraries. There are two methods in the field mask utility. The first one is compare, which accepts two parameters, original and modified, and will help you create a field mask based on different field values between those two parameters. All set fields of accepts one parameter only, which is the modified variable or parameter, and it helps you create 
a field mask based on all fields that are set on that modified parameter. So you can think about field masks like this. Let's take a look at the example on the screen. You have a campaign object and you have many properties on the campaign object. You want to mask only name and status. You use the field mask to specify that you want to update only name and status. So even if you send other fields to the server like advertising channel type or tracking URL template, they will be ignored. Let's take a closer look at the example of campaign operation. So in this campaign operation, you can see that for the update field, we have a campaign object. Again, we set so many properties here, resource name, name status, advertising, channel type, and tracking URL template. And you set the update mask to a field mask of name and status. So in this case, advertising channel type and tracking URL, which is set to hotel and example.com respectively, will be ignored when you send them to the server side. And notice that the field resource name is always taken into account, even when it doesn't appear in the update mask. Next is the response content type. In the response content type, you have two values to set, either resource names only or mutate resource. By default, the resource names of the modified entities are returned. This is equivalent to when you set the response content type of the request to resource name only. But when you set the response content type to mutable resource, you will get back the values of all mutable fields for every object that you created or updated in the request. You can use this to avoid an additional um, search or search stream request. However, this takes much more time to finish. So use it only when you want to modify the returned object. This is the structure of the mutate campaign result. As I have shown to you before, we have a resource name and a campaign as two properties of this um, mutate campaign result object. Again, resource name is always returned regardless of the response content type, but you will get back the campaign object only when you set the response content type of the request to mutable resource. The next feature is temporary IDs. In short, temporary IDs are the placeholders for future references. It is a negative ID that you can specify in the resource name of new entity that you are creating so that you can use it to create other entities that depend on that entity in the future. So in this example on the screen, you can see that we have mutated operations composed of um, campaign operation and ad group operation. In the campaign operation, you specified a campaign, um, the resource name of campaign to customers, customer ID, campaigns, and minus one. The minus one here is a temporary ID. So you specify minus one here so that you can use this in the future when you create an ad group because ad group depends on the campaign and you need to specify the campaign resource name. So in the ad group operation, in the ad group object, you specify minus one as the campaign ID. In this way, you can link the two entities together in one request. The temporary IDs will be assigned to real IDs by the Google Ads API server when you send the request to the server. There are some rules for temporary IDs. First, it is available when using multi-resource mutate and batch processing only. You cannot use this with the single resource mutate. And the order of operations is important. Like shown in the previous slide, the ad group operation depends on the campaign operation. So you need to create the campaign operation first, meaning that you need to add the campaign operation first and followed by the ad group operation in the request. Next, the temporary IDs cannot be used across jobs or mutate requests. So if you want to use those IDs, just wait until the request coming back, sorry, the, the results of the request coming back, and then you get the real IDs to specify next requests. Finally, the temporary IDs must be unique across different resource types. For example, um, in this table, temporary IDs for campaigns and ad groups must be different. Even if you want to um, use ad group in the ad group add operation later, you cannot use minus one as the ID for the ad group because it will collide with the campaign. 
So as you can see, the created resource name, we specified um, minus one as the campaign ID and minus two at the ad groups ID. And then in the ad group operation, we refer to the campaign's ID as minus one. And for the ad group ad operation, we refer to the ad group's ID as minus two. The final feature is mutate validation. Most mutate requests can be validated before executing the real call. You can use this feature by setting requests validate only field to true. The request is validated, but the final execution will be skipped. If no errors are found, you will get empty response. But if validation fails, an error message will be returned as usual. This is particularly useful in testing ads for common policy violations. However, note that errors can still occur in the real calls even if you get no errors in the validation mode. This is because there can be some transient errors on the server side or there can be changes in policies. The next topic is sample use cases with code examples. Because we have three mutate method types, I will show you three examples. For the single resource mutate, I will show you how to create several campaigns sharing the same budget. For the multi-resource mutate, I will show you example of creating a new campaign and multiple ad groups of this campaign in one request. Finally, for batch processing, I will show you how to pause 500,000 ad group ads. Let's take a look at the first example of single resource mutate. In this scenario, we are creating several campaigns sharing the same budget. Note that the code example on the screen is based on the ad campaign's code example of our client libraries. We have four steps here. First, create a new campaign object. Second, create a new campaign operation. Third, loop to create three campaigns. Four, send a mutate request to the server. Let's take a look one by one. The first step is to create a new campaign and set its properties like name, status, and so on and so forth. We assume that the budget that we will use here is shared among newly created campaigns, so we will not have any often resources generated because we use only one service, which is campaign service, to create new campaigns. You just need to specify the budget resource name to the campaign budget field of the campaign object. The second step is to create a new campaign operation by specifying the newly created campaign as the value of the create field. One campaign origin for each new campaign. And after that, you need to add that campaign origin variable to the campaign operations array variable. The third step is to loop three times. We use number three here as a hard-coded number, but in the real world situation, you may need to use a global variable or any parameter passed to you or to your function. Finally, we send the customer ID and the campaign operations object to the mutate campaigns method in order to create those campaigns on the server side, and we will get back the result as response variable. So this is the one single resource mutate request sent to one service. And note that one request can contain several operations. Next is the example of multi-resource mutate. In this scenario, we want to create a new campaign and multiple ad groups of the campaign in one request. The steps are as follows. Um, we create a mutate operation for a campaign budget operation first, and then we create a new mutate operation for a campaign operation. Third, we create mutate operation optics for ad group operation optics. Note that we have multiple ad groups here. Finally, we send one mutate request with the three operation types. The first step is to create a campaign budget operation by creating a new campaign budget first. We use resource names utility available in our client libraries to help create a new resource name. And also using the temporary ID set to minus one here to help create a resource name for a campaign budget. Note that we use minus one as a hard-coded number here, but in the real-world situation, you may want to use global variables or a kind of function that track these temporary IDs. The next step is to build campaign operation. This is similar to the previous step. You create a new campaign, setting some required properties like resource name, name, and other properties. We use resource name utility here again to help us create a new resource name and use minus two as a temporary ID. Recall that temporary IDs must be unique across resource types. Finally, we create an ad group operation several times. We have two ad groups here to create, so we set the loop to two. 
we create a new add group object and then set it to the add group operation object. And then we set those add group operations to the new variable called operations. Back to the main code, we have mutated operations variable set at first. And then we create a new mutate operation for the campaign budget operation I have already shown to you. We add this mutate operation to the mutate operations variable. For the campaign operation, we do it similarly. We set the campaign operation to the campaign operation field of the mutate operation and set it to the mutate operations variable. But for the add group operations, this will be different between client libraries and languages. So please check with your language um, what the language constructs would be suitable for this situation. For the PHP client library, we can use the combination of array merge and array map to help create a list of mutated operations, each contains previously created add group operation. Finally, we send the list of mutated operations together with the customer ID to the mutate method of the Google Ads service, and we will get back the response. Next is the batch processing code example. I based this example on the add complete campaigns using batch job code example of our client libraries. We are trying to pause 500,000 ad group ads here. The code example shown on the screen is very similar to the code example of our client libraries. But the difference that I will show to you here is just step two, add all batch job operations. In the add all batch job operations, highlighted here is the different point of the code. So instead of building all operations, I will build ad group ad muted operations only because that is what we want in this situation. In the build add group add mutate operations, I create a new variable named mutated operations to store all the mutated operation objects. And we loop over the past um, variables named add IDs containing all the add IDs that we want to pause. We create a new add group add object here and specifying the resource name to the add group add IDs and using the customer ID and a group ID we got from the parameters of the function. Then we set this newly created a group add to the update field of the a group add operation. And again, we have a field mask utility to help us create a field mask. So we use it specifically. We use all sets fields of method to help create a field mask of the created a group add operation. Sorry, a group add object. And we set that value to the update mask field of the accurate operation. Finally, we set the accurate operation field to the accurate operation object that we created. And we loop this over and over until we finish with all the add IDs we got. And that's all for the code examples and sample use cases. The final topic of this presentation is caveats and special cases of mutates. In the Google Ads API, mutates cannot be executed concurrently on the same object by more than one source. This includes many applications such as when you use Google Ads API, the AdWords API, or the Google Ads UI at the same time to modify the same object. Or the situation when many users trying to uh, modify the same object using the Google Ads API. Or the case when the same application modifies the same object using multiple threads. If two sources try to simultaneously mutate an object, the API will raise a database error dot concurrent modification error. Next, synchronous mutates may not always be complete after the connection ends. This is true for some cases like conversion uploads because some validations and post-processing are needed. Or the case when you use the offline user data job service to add a customer match. Finally, some features may have their own limitations, prerequisites, and requirements, such as remarketing, how to ads. And that's the end of the session. The final slide shows the useful resources that might help you migrate to the Google Ads API. Shown on the first line of the list is the Google Ads API developer website. You can start from there. The rest of the list are the resources relevant to this presentation. And as always, if you need any help, feel free to reach out to us via the dedicated support channels. Thank you for watching.